Hello everybody and welcome to the Dungeon Master Toolbox. My name is Joe and this will be the first of hopefully many videos where I'll be going over different tools you can use to improve your Dungeons and Dragons and other role playing games. Um, I personally as a Dungeon Master do a lot of my play in Roll20 since most of my players are all over the world, but I do play in some tabletop pen and paper games as well. And many of the tools that I'll be covering in this channel uh, are useful for both online and tabletop play. Uh, this first video for today, however, is focused on Roll20 macros. Uh, what I have found is that as a DM, when I'm playing with my players, most of them are playing either on uh, laptops or tablets. And when I ask them, make it a, a saving throw or make an ability check, they need a minute to go pull up their sheet and then find that check and then, you know, use it. Yeah, they can drag those individual checks down onto their macro bar down here in the bottom, but that can take up a lot of room and there's a lot of different abilities. So, what I've done is I have created two macros, one for saving throws and one for abilities. And what these will do, <coughs> excuse me, what these will do is allow them to simply click a button and be able to choose which saving throw, which ability they want to use if they're rolling with advantage or disadvantage or normal and make that roll. So let's take a look. Um, first, here's our player. So let's say that we ask Val to make her a uh, strength saving throw. So Val can just simply come up here and with her token selected, she can say saving throw. It'll pop up and ask, is this normal advantage or disadvantage? For this, we'll choose normal. Submit, and now we're gonna make her saving throw. So from this drop down, she can pick which one. We're gonna do a strength. We'll hit submit. You'll see two dice roll, but since it's a normal roll, it will only take the first, being a two with her minus one modifier you can see here. She rolled a one. That's not too good. Um, if she was going to roll it with advantage, she can choose advantage and do the same thing, a strength saving throw. And this time it'll use both dice and it'll take the higher two. Natural 20. Much better. Still with the minus one and 19, but it's a natural 20, so auto succeed. And finally, if we were to do a disadvantage, it would do the exact opposite, where it will shadow out the higher of the two, so this time a three. So that's how that works. Now, you'll see I have this set up as a token use, but as a player, she wanted to, she can set it up on her macro bar down here as well, uh, which I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But let's look at the ability check one. Very similar process, except now we're going to hit ability check, normal advantage or disadvantage, and let's say she's going to make a investigation check and submit. So there she goes. She got a 16 plus her 6 modifier, 22. And then if she was to do it with, you know, advantage, and we'll do that same investigation check again. So there you go. I think you get the idea. So these are great, they're fast, they'll speed up gameplay, the players can use them you know, quickly without having to go into their character sheets and look stuff up and, and hit buttons or anything like that, or you know, hit their macros within the character sheets. Uh, so I think this will definitely speed up play. So if you're unfamiliar with how these macros work, um, there's two places to do macros in Roll20. First is in this global section under the Collections tab. I uh, set certain macros in here. As a, as a DM, I can set these up, and uh, when I put them in bar, they'll show up here, and I can set them up so that um, other people, I can say, uh, I can give permissions for other people to see them here. And I can set them up as token actions as well. This is not the place you want to put these macros, either as a DM or as a player. These macros uh, are somewhat advanced. Uh, they use a lot of special characters for HTML that will revert uh, back to standard uh, text if they're put in a global section. So these need to go into the player's character sheets. So if we look at Val's here, uh, so you know in your player sheet, um, you know again normally they would click on these things here to roll the macros. Under the abilities and attributes, uh, right here under abilities, you can create macros for an individual character sheet just by clicking Add, and then click the little edit icon, and then you can type a macro in here. So what I've done is I've created these two here. And the saving throws one is this. And you'll see here there's a lot of these weird looking characters like this ampersand hashtag one two five semicolon. What that does is that replaces a closed curly bracket. And you know, without getting too uh, advanced here, it needs to happen for this macro to work because of just crazy stuff. So that's why it needs to go in the sheet. If you were to put this into that collection section, 
all these special characters would all revert back to closed curly brackets and the whole thing would break. So this is the saving throw one, and then this is the ability check one. Which I'll expand for you. And you can see that it, there's a lot to it. So I don't want you to have to type all this. Uh, underneath the video, you'll find a link to a paste bin text file where you can just copy and paste the text into the two macros you create for yourself and just put them into each player's character sheet or if you're the player, put it into your character sheet and you're all set, you're done, this will work. Now this is for uh, the 5e uh, OGL character sheet, this character sheet here that you see. Um, I don't know, I haven't tried, I, I doubt it would work on any other type of character sheet. I'm sure those macros would be different. So. Uh, I hope you find this helpful. Uh, I think my players uh, like it a lot, and, and it's definitely sped up our gameplay. Uh, so feel free to use it. Uh, if you like this video, please click like, subscribe. Uh, I will be hopefully putting out some more videos here in the near future. Some will be on Roll20. Some will be on some other digital tools I like to use as a DM to make my, uh, my gaming experience a little easier, a little more organized, a little smoother. Um, uh, hopefully we do some videos on tools like Realmworks and Campaign Cartographer, among other uh, software that I like to use as a DM to make my life just you know easier and better. So please enjoy, and uh, thank you guys for watching.